it's LSFT here today, and today I'm here to talk about protecting your OBD port. In previous videos, when we talked about vehicle thefts, we talked about known methods that thieves are using to break into our cars and steal them. First one we know is the CAN bus attack. When they pull out the bumper and pull the headlight wires and plug into a device that they have, and then tell the car to unlock and start the vehicle. This one is one that they can steal the car in less than one minute, and that's really ridiculous. Toyota and Lexus has done some work with the Toyota security key that encrypts messages between each component within the car so that the message sent to the starter module will not understand the command. I've talked about this in a video, and I put a description on that video below. Another method, which was done in earlier days, where they would do a signal relay attack, where the thief will actually take a signal amplifier to amplify your key fob tricking your car, thinking that the key fob is right beside the vehicle, so that they can unlock and start the vehicle. Toyota and Lexus have started releasing ultra-wideband signals, which ultra-wideband includes distance information, so that when the amplified signal reaches the car, the car knows that it's still far away from the car, so that the car will not unlock. It cannot be tricked. Faraday bags and boxes or sleeping the key fob will also mitigate this attack. The next method uses the OBD port to program a new key for the car. In the auto industry, locksmiths have a tool that is quite expensive to allow them to program keys in case you lose your key fob and allow them to program new key fobs so that you can actually get a new key fob if it fell in the water, right? This machine is expensive, but it seems like a much lower cost version has been created and available for thieves to use. Using this machine, they can program a new key fob, giving them access to their car and drive away. Thieves typically will try to break into the door, either they break your lock open the front door, or they break a rear window and then gain access to the car, plug in to the OBD port and use their device to program a brand new key. With that, they can now drive away thinking that the car thinks that, oh, this is a new key that I trust. So I don't think Toyota Lexus has done any work to prevent this from happening, but I think allowing a key to be programmed, they probably can do something. In this video, I will show what I have purchased to cover up and protect the OBD port. The device I purchased is a lower cost version and it's not the high-end protector which is made of metal. I think you need to determine what works for you because some will see that a $600 metal OBD port protector is worth it. Some will say that it's too expensive. So it's up to you which one you wanna use but it's important that what protection level do you need for your vehicle? If you park your car always outside, you may want a better protection. But if you only go to the mall for once in a while or and always park in the garage, maybe you don't need as heavy duty version. So this is the OBD guard that I purchased off Amazon. It's definitely a lot cheaper than the metal one. It's almost three times cheaper in cost. For me, this would be enough as I do park my car in the garage. This OBD guard is made out of something called PETG. Polyethylene terephthalate glycol. I didn't even try to pronounce it because I will definitely get it wrong. But this material is used for 3D printing. And I believe this is actually also 3D printed as well. But when you look at it, when I actually try and see how strong it is, it seems to be extremely tough. But definitely, some people would believe metal is the better option. But again, from a pricing standpoint, this is one third or even one quarter of the price of the metal one. All right, so I assembled them together and you can see now it's in one piece. And how does this work? So you can see here, hopefully you can see, that there's actually a little clip on this piece. And what it does is this piece will actually grabs onto the OBD port and then 
it actually gets it locked in. And you need this type of uh, screwdriver to actually pull it out. So you can see that this has a little dip in the middle. Normal screwdrivers actually don't have that hole. So you can't just go and pick a normal screwdriver with this type of torsion uh, key and be able to pull that out because you can't put your, your, your screwdriver into this hole. You'll have to break open, break that, in order for normal screwdriver bits to fill it in. If you do have this, then definitely it's something that you can easily pull this open. If not, you will not be able to pull this open. So you can see this key can easily go and unscrew this. And I can then actually unscrew it with my fingers. So it's very important that you use a normal, like, get it tight so people can just use their fingers to open it. So you can see here, you can easily flip this open. And when you look at this material, it's extremely hard. It's extremely hard plastic. It's definitely something that not that easy to like break open. And if you really use a sledgehammer and break it, you probably break the OBD port already. And this is probably, it, it does look like it's like a 3D print or something, but I guess it works if it works, right? One thing to talk about the screw again is people would say, okay, just use a normal screwdriver. So you can't really use a flat or a Phillips or anything to really open this because of that middle piece. So it's very important that you don't lose this key so that you can open it. So what you'll need to do is when you install it, when you go to the dealership, if you do any software updates or anything, it's better off to take it off because uh, they don't have this key to take, it, like, to, to take it off and they can't do your service. So let's get to it and install it and see what it looks like. All right, so you can see here, I would have to put this on, slide this in, and then this will actually lock into the in place and then screw it in and I'm done. And then again, don't keep this in the car. <laughs> if you keep it in the car, then it's quite useless. Probably, if you have a fan day bag or a box, put it in there so that you know it's there. And you don't have to worry about finding it later on because you'll misplace it, most likely. All right, let's install it. Follow me on Instagram at LSFTVideos. You can see updates on my experience with the NX 450H Plus, which may not be shown on any future videos. You can reach out to me via direct messaging if you have any questions on your Lexus. If you like this video, you can provide me feedback in the comments below, like this video, share it with your friends. This definitely will help with the YouTube algorithms. Press the subscribe button and bell icon and get notified when new videos show up. And lastly, if you want to support me further, you can provide me a super thanks or visit my Amazon storefront before you purchase anything from Amazon and or you can purchase products from the list on the items that I've been using with my vehicle or at home at no extra cost to you. And now let's continue with the video. So I would suggest moving your seat a little bit back when you do this because it gives you a little bit more room. All right, so let me go and try and install it. All right, so I'm in the driver's side and you can see how dirty it is. And it is actually very hard to film here because it's actually quite tight. So I'm gonna tilt down a little bit here. So you can see now, this is the OBD2 port. You can see this is the port and this is what it's supposed to protect. And then beside down here, there are actually fuses and some other things that to prevent you from kicking it. Uh, there's some protection here and there's also an LED light. So this is the ambient lighting that you see at night. All right, so this is the port that we're trying to, to protect. And you can see it's wider on the top, which is wider closer to the driver. And it's actually not as wide when you're facing outside the car. All right. And then when you look at this piece, so when you look at here, you can see it's wider on the top and not as wide on the bottom. All right, so now you can easily see the OBD, OBD2 port. And you can see here, here is 
the thing. So now I put this on top. So you can see now it's put on top. But it will come off, right? Because not, I haven't installed this other piece. So this other piece, I'll have to put on and then slide it in. So once it slides in, you can see it slide in. Try and nudge it a bit to so force it down. And it does not come off. So when it doesn't come off, what you do is now you take the screw and you screw it on. Alright, so now you can see I hand screwed it and then I'm going to use this key to screw it in. So really the installation should be less than a minute if you know what you're doing. And then once you get to a certain tightness, just make sure you don't over tighten it. And then there you go. So now I cannot use my hand to unscrew it and you can see it's locked in. When it's locked in, it means it's all covered. Now you cannot take this off. And now it stays. And it's not really that intrusive, so you really won't kick it or anything. And it now covers the OBD port. So anybody opening, getting into your car, trying to plug it in, and try to program your, your car for another key, it will be a, a little bit harder. So now you can see me not touching it, it actually does not fall off. So that's how you can use an OBD tube guard or protector to protect the OBD port. So there are other techniques. Some other people would actually redirect the OBD port. So they will make this a fake port and then move the port somewhere else. So they'll move the wire into like the glove compartment so that they can actually program it from there. But again, that's a much bigger job to do. And that doesn't prevent people, like you can actually lock the glove box. So that gives them an, another time that you have to spend to open your glove box to actually get the OBD port. And at that time, they probably would say, let me just try the car in the other driveway next side, like beside me, right? So that's what you're trying to hope them to do is even if they get access to your car, they see this, they say, oops, I don't want to deal with this. Go to the next car. All right, so now after installing, again, remember to put this back into your Fan Day box or somewhere safe then you know where it is because if you really need that port to like to program something or to check your car stats, you need this. If not, you're screwed. You will not be able to take it off. Maybe some mechanics will figure a way to take off that screw, but you don't really want that hassle, so don't lose this. The installation was very simple, and it only took a few minutes to install. The plastic is quite tough, and it's not easy to take off. Trying to pry it off will most likely damage the OBD port. But even if you went and bought the most more expensive metal protector, it doesn't stop thieves from buying the same protector from these companies and then using the tools that came with it to take it off. So it's not bulletproof. Definitely, it's only something you, you can add on to slow them down so that when they see it, they say, I need to do more work. I'm just going to leave it and go. Hopefully, that's what's going to happen. I hope that you found that this video was informative. And until next video, drive safely. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please comment, like, share this video. And if you want to see more videos like this, you can subscribe to my channel and press that bell icon to get notified when new videos are posted. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can provide me a super thanks. And until next time, cheers.